Hi, today I'm going to share with you on another pneumorphic design, which is this. I would say this is called the pneumorphic pie chart. And this one is pretty tough for me. And here is the actual code and the actual pie chart that I have created in Flutter. If I were to compare it side by side, it looks very similar, maybe 60 to 70%. And I'm going to share with you on how to create it. If you look at the design, there's actually a few components that you have to create or a few widgets. First, it's a very simple outer white circle. Then second, you have the pie of the pie chart, which looks a bit like a progress bar. And lastly, we have the inner donut. So these are the three widgets that we are going to create. The first widget that we have discussed is the empty white circle which is actually a container with a preset height and width with a box shape of circle and you could say that I have an opacity of 70% of white because it's not exactly white white but yeah it's a very simple circle if you're wondering what these are these are pneumorphic bar designs which is on the link on top there's a tutorial or speed code video that I've made, so check it out. Next, we have the middle ring. A widget that basically consists of just two containers, which are circles. Why I like to use containers is because they are very simple to actually create a circle. You don't have to use painter, which we are going to use later for our pie chart or I would say the progress bar pie chart. The inner ring consists of the outer ring which is a very simple circle container which is chow, it's a center circle container. The difference is that it is smaller and the box shadow which gives the pneumorphic design or feeling. Pneumorphic is basically just the effect of it not being flat and there's a couple of links that you can check it out what pneumorphic is now the effect that we need to replicate is to have a darkened area inside the inner circle but if you see closely there is this white shadow because of the lighting and pneumorphic design principle so i would say 75 percent of the inner shadow is gray while the one quarter left is white in shadow or I would say reflection. It is almost there. Maybe I need to have a bit more spread radius, but there is the shadow here, which consists of 75% of the inner ring. And there is the white shadow or reflection, but I think it's too bright to the point that it looks that is blended with the outer thicker ring. To create the shadow, you have to create some box shadow inside the box shadow parameters and you can use the offset of negatives and positives. You can play around with it. And the shadow color is what I've gotten from the design itself. So I use a very simple color picker, a web extension that allows me to get the exact color of the shadow and I just put it in. This is the color of the shadow for the inner circle. Now we have finished with the easy parts. Let's go on to the hard part of this design, which are the progress bar or uh, the pies of the pie chart. Luckily, I don't have to wreck my brain to figure out how to create the progress bar kind of shapes because thankfully for Coders Haven or Heaven, he has a tutorial on how to create the shape and all of the code is in the description and I will link you the video or YouTube video that he has created. So what you need to do is actually you just need to copy all of this code called the progress painter and it is basically the shape of the progress painter that he have. Sadly, I have not find any simpler solution because I think the only way that you can solve or create a design is using custom painter. Let's see. To use the progress painter, you need to initialize a custom paint with the painter as the progress painter. 
So it looks something like this where the circle width is 50 and the completed percentage is 15.0 and you can have the default circle color to be amber which is basically the background and the percentage completed circle color which is in green I love how he named the parameters it is very readable and I can straight away just use it great job coder heaven now let's look into the custom painter of the progress painter so we have all the parameters that he has uh, created or the constructor and then he has this get paint method which paints the different progress painter and it is very standard you have this stroke cap round this means that your progress is very rounded there is different types there is but funny <laughs> which is just a flat surface and there's one more where which is called square which is also very similar but you will have this effect meaning that you have the color filled in a square but we are going to use the round and then painting style stroke so there's different types of painting style that you can play with so you have fill and stroke there's only two so you're going to use stroke don't get stroke if you are in stroke then please call 999 and then lastly we need the stroke width which is the thickness of the progress bar it is very simple you have the default circle paint progress circle paint then you have the center for your circle and then you have the radius and you have canvas draw circle so this is basically using canvas and the method draw circle which will paint you a circle like this and at the same time we have this arc angle that means it is where exactly your progress bar is being rendered and then you will draw an arc so this is an arc and one thing to note is that an arc is something like a semi-ish circle kind of thing but without you using the center it will look something like this if we were to use the center let's see how it will look like so you can see here that is actually a slice of the pie chart that's why you will put this as false so it will render exactly the progress bar itself Technically, we can say we are done, but we are not because the challenge for the pneumorphic design is gradients on the progress bar itself, which is actually very hard. And I'm going to show you why. This is what exactly I was actually looking for, a gradient for the progress bar itself or the arc itself. However, there is some limitations to this. We call this gradient a sweep gradient meaning it just sweeps through without it having to repeat itself or such and this is how it looks like so you have to create a sweep gradient and then at the same time you have to insert it in the paint that you create on your progress bar using shader with the rectangle or offset that you have created inside your progress bar so it will look something like this I've created a paint method I think it's a very bad method name and basically what it does is you will create a sweep gradient with the colors that you want so in in the design that we have here I'm just going to take the two colors which is one over here and the other one over here the lighter and the darker one I'm not going to use uh, different colors throughout two colors will be simple enough for me to just create a very simple pneumorphic design so after I created a sweep gradient I'm going to add in inside our paint using create shader method with our bounding circle with our bounding square rectangle from circle an example is that if you were to use gradient it has some sort of this weird cutoff so it's from lime green to a normal shade of green but it cuts off like this if I were to put a full circle it would look something like this so the whole part of this circle or maybe I would say 80% of the color is actually uniform 
while the gradient is only shown maybe at 25% of the circle. So that's one thing that I was figuring out on how to actually create those little progress bar or pies that you see here. It is very small and the gradient looks very nice. So I was wondering on how to do it. If you were to look at how an arc is being drawn, the different parameters that you use is rectangle, a start angle, a sweep angle, using center and paint. So I've explained what use center and paint and rectangle is, but what is start angle and sweep angle? So from what you probably have already guessed, the start angle is exactly where the angle of this whole progress bar is being rendered. So this is the start and then the sweeping angle, probably the length of it. And as you can see here, we use negative pi divided by 2 for where we start on top. And then the arc angle is where, how long this is. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this is what I figured from a lot of trial and errors. So I realized that in the end, we have to move this whole arc in order for us to actually use some of the circle. And one thing that I've also noticed is the gradient has some sort of properties that we can actually change. So they also have their own start angle and end angle. And it depends on how you want to render this whole thing. So let us try to focus on this sweep gradient first. I have modified the progress rings or I would say the custom painter to be able to modify the start angle and the end angle for the gradient. Let's look on how it looks like. Now you can see that if we were to put the gradient start angle to zero and pi to a third, the whole thing actually is a normal shade of green and the last part is just the lime green. However, what we want is a very small amount of the pie to have half lime green and half normal shade of green. How do we do that? We actually play around with the gradient start angle and the gradient end angle to have this gradient to be 25% of the whole circle. If we change the pie to be divided by 2, now there's actually more lime green than dark green. And if I were to cut off the 25% mark here, so I have decreased the completed percentage to 0.4 and now you can see that hey, this looks something to what we want to achieve where it has some lime green and half of it is the actual shade of green. So how do we cut all of this? How do we make this thing to move up? So what I've tried so far is that for whatever reason, the pie on Custom Painter does not allow you to move how this thing renders no matter how many times you divide or times pi it will always have a uniform gradient or split of green or colors around the circle so what i come up with is to actually remove this whole thing or to move the whole bar into our desired shape now you can see here that we have added a couple of things so first is progress start angle and length to remove. So what does this do? Like I said earlier, this is where we can adjust where the progress start angle starts. And at the same time, we can remove the amount of progress bar that we don't need. So if I play around with the numbers, if I were to put here maybe one for length to remove and you save it, this is the amount of progress bar that we have. So we have to delete it. So we put three here and it has that gradient that we want. Now, what does this progress start angle do? So if I were to just put as one, this is how it looks like. It looks pretty ugly, right? Basically what it does is it moved forward. So imagine this whole circle has that gradient circle, but now is where you actually are looking at. Something like a uh, binoculars. So we want our binoculars to look at the part where it looks very nice, the gradient. So we just play around with the numbers and what I've achieved so far is 1.85. Great. And one thing that you might have seen different is that I have this transform rotate. We're using pi and a multiplier. If I don't have this angle, it will actually look something like this. The only way that I can move this whole widget up is to actually rotate it. Something like a DAO back in the days where you have to, you know, press a button and then swipe it down and such. You know, 
boomers <laughs> by just adding transform.rotate we can render our progress bar at the position that we desire and this is where exactly we want here now you can see the rest on how i do it now you can see the picture on how to do this so i just handpicked and really just trial and error to all of the progress bar which are four of them and this is the final product which i'm really happy about now lastly we need to add the shadow how do we do the shadow do you remember correct the box shadow <laughs> so we add our box shadow inside our inner or outer circle you guessed it the outer circle and it will look something like this it will look like our bar or our pie is levitated to ask what the design tries to do so that's about it that's how you create a pneumorphic pie